His son comes, the son comes back and is like, F you, mommy, your world class husband mug. No thanks. Now, Let's would see. this happen in modern society? Would corporations collaborate with, say, the cartels? No, never. Never would they do that. Came up with a way to give it pain so that it feels pain? Like, why, why would you do this? Just turn and blast. Looking for me? So I get, okay, 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 seriously, I get, okay. I don't get poisoned and my True. shareholders maximize profits because we don't have to pay for the cleanup. Like, how's this not a win-win? Then the gas station goes up. This is the same scene. Gas station goes up. Is this realistic? Realistic, you mean so the boom boom? The boom boom. Mm. So at first I was like, this is not realistic. I don't think a gas station will go up like that. But then maybe it's okay. Maybe, maybe. Okay. let's let's work it piece by piece. So in order for there to be gasoline on the ground, this hose needs to be punctured. The hose mm -hmm. needs to be punctured and needs to be spraying out. I have never looked inside a gas pump, but I imagine that it's when you turn on the gas pump, then it turns on a pump and then it pulls the liquid out. The, the, the gasoline out mm -hmm. what this in order for this to spray out it needs the gasoline hose needs to be pressurized such that just just like a like a like a bicycle tire or a car yeah. tire you punch it there's already mm -hmm. pressure in it and then it sprays out um yeah. that's different than say like a straw and a cup where like if you let go of the straw the liquid's not pressurized it just sits in the cup and so if you puncture the straw from the side it doesn't spray out everywhere yeah. So, so first, but, the first thing is that this this hose needs to be pressurized all the time, which I'm not sure mm -hmm. is actually what happens. But if it is, say it is in this case, then yeah, I think it's okay that this gasoline is spraying all over the place. It, it, but uh, this this hose looks non-standard. I mean, the hose should be internal to the pump. Why is there this external hose? Maybe that's a key that's as a to why it's okay. pressurized. I think that's okay for a couple reasons. So the the hose the hose has to come out of the pump at some point because it needs to like go to your car right so so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm imagining imagining somewhere there's like the nozzle bit i can't see it in here but uh, the hose comes down just in fact in fact when i was living in nebraska we i found one of these old super old pumps it was it was it was interesting it was like from the mm -hmm. 40s or 50s or something so i'm okay with the hose being outside okay uh, so if you leave yeah. the the nozzle if you clamp down on the the nozzle yeah. trigger the thing hand, the handle yeah the handle and you leave it open how far will that the gasoline spray out i've never i've never tested it never i don't, don't want to test that <laughs> I, I, put, I put the nozzle in the gas tank yeah um a few feet i guess i don't know yeah. based off of just videos i've seen on the internet mm -hmm. yes so is that what's happening here the nozzle is stuck open or is this a line that's been cut i think this was hit by a bullet i think i think uh Okay. I think. Okay, so so <laughs> if this pump works as a constantly pressurized pump, I don't know why it would, but if that is, maybe maybe this is how it used to work, and then for safety reasons, these have been the mm -hmm. pumps have been reengineered to only turn on when you turn it on. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Um, so 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 let's go with there's gasoline spewing all over the place. Fine, 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 fine. And so then the question. Oh wow, yeah, there there it is, torn. Oh, it is. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if there is gasoline spewing all over the place, then is this explosion reasonable? And I think, yeah, I think, I think so. I think it's okay. So I think this is how gasoline burns. Like it's not, it's okay. not like an explosive, like Tannerite or T4, which I've never seen actually explode, but I've seen Tannerite explode. It's like a puff of white gas and rapid velocities, rapid kinetic energies, but not this billowy red stuff. I think this billowy red stuff is a gasoline explosion. And it has the ability to explode. Well, I think the liquid does not explode or it doesn't even yeah, really burn that well. It's the gasoline quickly evaporates and then the, the vapors can burn quickly. I see. Right. And I think this is a okay. quick burn, not an explosion. Is that right? I think that's exactly why. Yeah, exactly right. So it's a, I guess, what's the difference between a quick burn and an explosion? Just speed i guess and the, so like I the pressure so i was looking this up years ago the difference between conflagration and detonation is actually 
very different. But I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. I'm still not sure. But I think this is a this is a conflagration, not a detonation. Oh gosh, did I really want to look? <laughs> did I really want this on my search history? Okay, uh, that's deflagration. Mm -hmm. um, to burn down subsonic combustion. Ah, is that the key point? Deflagrations Maybe. in. Oh, right, let's zoom in a little bit. Deflagrations in high and low explosive fuel oxidizer mixtures may transition to a detonation depending on the confinement and other factors. Hmm. Most fires found in daily life are diffusion flames. Defl deflagrations with flame speeds in the range of one meters per second is different from detonations, which propagate supersonically with detonation velocities in the range of kilometers per second. Oh. So it's a really, it really is about a kinetic energy. It's about how quickly these spread out. So it sounds like this is a deflagration mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it burned slowly. Whereas if it was a detonation, it wasn't like mm -hmm. rapid burn. This is burning uh, slowly. And I think that's, that's consistent with what you said about the liquid not being very flammable. It's like mm -hmm. you need to have the right fuel to oxygen mi mixture so that mm -hmm. both reagents, both reagents can, can have access to each other and then explode. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I think that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. That's why in your engine, you don't just straight up burn fuel. You don't. You don't just it. You get fuel mixed with oxygen, and that fuel is micronized, atom, atomized. It's like you have yeah. these jet nozzles that go pss, 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 and takes this liquid fuel and like spreads it out into small little tiny tiny droplets. So that way you get mm -hmm. a lot of surface area. You get a lot of contact between the fuel and the oxygen. And that Which, that that allows faster. Combustion, combustion, maybe detonation, because there's a high surface area on the droplets right. that allows good oxygen plus fuel mixing rapidly. I wonder if for detonations, you don't even need to worry about that. You don't even worry about like, do I have enough oxygen? Like, no, no, the explosion is going to be fast enough. It's going to be rapid enough. It's going to be expansive enough that it'll take care of that, I guess. Maybe. Or maybe it doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. if, if you have all of your fuel components already there, then you don't already need there. to worry about mixing. You just set it off and it goes. And it goes. Mm -hmm. So here, we would characterize this as an explosion, but not a detonation, because there's a rapid combustion of the gasoline vapors that were caused by the rapid ev evaporation of the leaking gas ah. from the hose. That's right, because it wasn't just hose in. It wasn't just gasoline like in the pump. It's, it's sprayed all out all over the ground. So this stuff is rapidly yeah. evaporating. Right. Yeah, and if you, gosh, this is a real safety thing. If you're going to start a campfire with gasoline, you need to be fast because it's rapidly, it's rapidly vaporizing, and you don't see mm -hmm. it. It's rapidly evaporating, and so, so uh, yeah, I, I had a friend who lost some eyebrows for that. Uh, you got to be fast, or, nice. or start a fire a different way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm. I first thought this was unrealistic, but now I'm thinking maybe it's okay. I think so. Gasoline burns in vapor form. That's right. So yeah, yeah. That, so that's how you. I think okay, okay, okay. We're putting this together. So that's how you get these tall, billowy red clouds because it's burning slowly, slowly compared to an explosion. An explosion yeah. would just be psh, gone, gone. Okay, I'm actually like okay it. with this then. Yeah, yeah. Tight. Yeah, good explanation. This is brutal. So, okay, so Robocop is getting memories of his previous life and he goes and checks out where his family used to live and he walks in and sees this world-class husband mug. Absolutely brutal. Let's watch it. <laughs> Let's watch it happen. He's found the house, goes inside. Empty. getting kind of memories memories Great of his life was super yeah. nice super, I'd be, I'd be, okay 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 wait wait he has a police officer he's yeah. officer he lives in this house oh, that's super nice that's super nice yeah. i know damn the 80s oof and it's empty okay but what is this it's a cup Okay, so like 
Robocop died. But he died. he died and his former wife, his widow, his widow wife, she moved on. But this looks like a real nasty, like 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 cheated on him or he cheated on her and, and she he destroyed her emotionally. Because it's not just it's not just an empty house. There's like F U signs. Like this burnt this burnt family portrait mm -hmm. and this this world class husband and it's like broken and she left it behind. It's one thing to move on with your life, but this feels like insult. This feels like she was angry at him for dying. Like this feels, this feels, this is brutal. Right. It's good. There, it has like char marks on it. Like she burned it, broke mm -hmm. it, and then left it there for him to see. She's like, <laughs> like set, set it out on the kitchen. <laughs> this this house is for sale. This like this this is the house. This house is empty, and people are going to come in. They're going to look at it, and this mug is left there for them. What that means, okay, that means the housing people who are going to sell it, they came by and cleaned the whole place out because they're going to sell it. There's no way they're having garbage everywhere. Yeah. The wife, they clean it out. The wife comes back and in a fit of rage <laughs> and revenge, sets fire to memories and leaves it there. And that's the garbage. I think so. She's I mean, so mad. I mean, yeah, this place is clean. I guess maybe these flowers are explained as the realtor put these flowers here, but then they died over time when they didn't check in it. Mm -hmm. that makes but sense. I, just, I just cannot come up with an explanation for why there's like trash. There's trash here. Right. And not just trash, like, like burnt, burnt trash. memories. There's right. like a book and a photo and a cup and maybe other things. It's like, why are these memories of the previous owner in the house burned? Right. Can you, imagine, going on? can you imagine going into this house? You're like, here's a showing. I'm going to see if I want to live here. You're like, this place is cursed. Like, what is going on? Like, this what is going on? Like, bad juju for days. Why is there I a guess, burned photo of the previous husband used to live here? Like, <laughs> he was, sorry, he was, what, he was killed in a cop situation? Uh, why, why is there photos on the counter? He was, he was killed in a cop situation. He's defending the city. In, in his line of duty, he, he sacrificed, ultimate sacrifice for the good people, and that made his wife hate him? What's going on? Oh, gosh. I mean, people people mourn in their own ways, but this is like, she hated him? She's like, she she really didn't like him? Like, oof. Like, I don't have an explanation. Murphy. Maybe it's the sun. The sun is mad at him. Comes back, burns all the stuff. I can see that. Teenage Rebellion like, doesn't, know how, doesn't know how to let go of his feelings nicely. His dad okay. died, but instead he's like, my dad abandoned me. I hate him. Abandoned me. And so the son comes back and burns so, all the, the stuff. So his son comes, the son comes back and is like, F you, mommy, your world-class husband mug. No, thanks. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, here it is. If you were a good husband and therefore the father, if you're a good father, you would have stayed around instead of going out there and dying. He would have worked for OCP. Probably would have got paid a little bit better. Yep. Oof. Loser. Cool. Oh, so RoboCop now in the server room at the police station. I was blown away by this. This movie was made in the 80s. And all the technological stuff that we have today is here. Data storage, mainframes, facial recognition. All mm -hmm. of it is here. It's just we're better at it today. The technology has progressed. But it's all here. This is the 80s. Look at this surfer room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cooling. Cooling, yep. You can hear the fans. Yep. You can't hear Data storage. Here. This Data storage. is a restricted area. The nerd. I mean, different idea Data. about USB sticks, but all right. Yeah. Database. Database. He's doing this like cross reference lookup. Yep, you know facial rec we, facial. He inputs a face, does some facial recognition algorithm something, and is pulling up a bunch of parts of people's faces and assembling it together. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, that's that's some that's some clever modern stuff. But actually, thought about in the eighties. In the eighties, yeah. Got him. Identity. Got him. Database cross referencing. Yep. Then he's able to find his own murder. 
on my face. So he knows this tech is a, is available. Facial recognition, databases, cross correlation. I'm not sure what the word is. He knows it's there, and this is this would be this is very familiar to us today. Yeah, we know this is possible. It's full it's on data 80s. centers. Yeah, and so like the 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 I guess the the details, the specifics of what GPUs, what server racks you're cooling in different tech, they're, they're modern, right? But mm -hmm. all these concepts, all the structure of this is there. It's there. It's been around it's for a long there. time. So this prediction of this being available in the 80s, I mean, spot on. Details oh, a little bit I off, see. but spot on. That's right, because these type of places did not exist in the 80s, but there was a prediction that it would exist so in I think, the, now. So I think mainframes like this did exist in the 80s in my previous place that I worked that we definitely cleared out an old eighties mainframe room. And it was mm -hmm. exactly like this. Mm. Um, I just don't think it was known to the public as much as it is today with like the cloud. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, very interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So Dick is a corporate man and Hey, Bob is undercutting his profits and the corporate profits take care of business. How you doing? Uh, 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 leave. Do you know who I am? Do you think you're gonna get away with this? Gonna... Ah, God damn it! Duh! Bob keeps his Hello, cool. Hello, buddy boy. Dick Jones here. I guess you're on your knees about now, begging uh, for your life. That you don't feel so cocky now, do you, Bob? Whatever he's paying you, I'll double it right now. You know what? The... Okay, can we take a moment and appreciate that Bob Morton, Dick's competitor, He's got shot mm -hmm. in both legs. Yep. He's keeping it together. He is, like, yeah. Would I be so calm if I had both of my legs shot? Like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think I'd be writhing in pain. I don't know if I'd be even be able to hear what Dick Jones is saying. <laughs> That's a good point. I guess maybe he's hopped up on whatever drug this is, cocaine-ish like stuff. Superhuman strength. Is that a thing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And adrenaline plus cocaine. Sure. Mm. Cool room, though. Like, like two televisions here, got several televisions. <laughs> Watch the same show from many angles. That's right. Tragedy that is interesting. Bob, we could have been friends, but you wouldn't go through proper channels. You went over my head. That hurt. But mm. life goes on. It's an old story. The fight for love and glory, huh, Bob? What it helps if you think of it as a game, Bob. Every game has a winner and a loser. <laughs> So Bob loses yep. and Dick wins. And Dick wins because he understands the game. If you, want to, if you need to collaborate with organized crime to take out your competition and get, the, get your bag, get your, get your winnings, you do it. Mm -hmm. Now, would this happen in modern society? Would corporations collaborate with, say, the cartels? No, never. Never would they do that. Never. I it would absolutely never happen. They would report them immediately to the authorities. Gosh. Okay. Okay. So Dick is super clever here because he hires Boddicker, who is an actual criminal, to do yep. criminal stuff. And so if police ever figure this out, what happened here at Bob Morn's house, they're like, a criminal did it. And they correctly find a criminal did it. It's not like Bob's getting some like, clean person and then the clean person's going to turn on him, right? And so do corporations work with actual criminals? So that way, if the criminals get caught, just immediately under the bus? Maybe. I mean, that's, that's they, what you would do, right? Right. That's what you would do. Maybe create a shell company in some kind of third world situation, offshore situation to, to offload your illegal activities. I don't think they would do this in the modern world. I mean, I that would be bad they would promptly re report the criminal activity, the proper authorities and give up the profits. Yeah, because no amount of profits is worth doing any criminal activity. Yeah, dishonesty, horrible things to other humans. We have, we have honesty, dignity, integrity in the modern world. We would never do this. Yup, that's how I think about things. Mm -hmm. Dick Jones, he's evil. Dick Jones, but he's, he's evil, but he's doing what he's supposed to do. Hey do right like his That's responsibilities right, yeah. to the shareholders to make sure and in that sense he has high levels of integrity yeah yeah what does not have high levels of integrity is this this drug facility it's <laughs> terrible it you it's needed terrible. an engineer in here fix this up l l this, okay okay oh so much waste 
I can't even watch. What is this packaging? I don't give a shit what you want to pay. I set the prices here. I'm the guy in all Detroit. You're gonna have to give me a volume discount. I'm not into discounts. This place, okay. I get it. <laughs> it's good. It's good that they've automated some stuff. So there's like you get past the human power. You can you can get things moving fast. But it's just it's just terrible. Okay, okay. Let's let's slowly here. So they have this these bottles, I, these flasks, mm -hmm. I guess, and they're so misaligned. Like line line this up so that everything's gonna go. This this one's good. This one's good. Mm -hmm. Nozzles right above the bottle. These two on the outside are misaligned. And what happens when they're misaligned? Get all the spillage. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Drug. It's so much spillage. That's like 30, 20, 30 percent of the powder. Like if it's cheap stuff that you don't care about, then whatever, throw it on the ground. But this is your this is expensive stuff. This is your actual product. Like just 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 engineer get an engineer here to get this thing designed nicely. And then not right. only that, but you get to this next station or I guess the first station, the guy that's filling up the mm -hmm. station. And he, he just it's just a dude with a scoop. Mm -hmm. And he raises this this scoop above his shoulder. That's a repetitive stress injury. That's that's I mean, yeah. that's that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Hey, what what are we doing here? Like, get, get this guy get this guy like a platform he can stand on, and then raise yep. this bucket this barrel up with a forklift, and then put it up there. So that way he's working in the ergonomic range that's below the shoulders, maybe about the hips, uh, or get a conveyor belt. What are we doing? Right. And actually, I guess the. If, if this guy accidentally dropped it during transfer, that's a lot of profits being lost. That's a lot of drugs just straight up on the ground. On the no ground, good. yeah. So, this... gosh, this really bothers me. Look how much spillage. Yeah, that's right. that's profits going out the window. Have right Narrow the, the nozzle. Narrow the nozzle, yeah, yeah. Make this into a finer tip and just insert it inside and then drop the yeah. drugs. Yeah. It's not like there's so much powder coming out that the throughput is excessive that they need the wider nozzle they could narrow the nozzle and still get the same amount going through i think there's plenty of air absolutely but also what is this distance why are the drugs being dropped at all wait, 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 wait. but sometimes oh, yeah. sometimes these bottles go up to the nozzle this is this is this makes sense to me right, right? Yep. The nozzles lined up with the lip the lip of the bottle and then you get all the drugs mm -hmm. going inside but sometimes the machine misfires and just drops it from here just, just good luck. Whatever ends up in there ends yeah. up in there. How are you going to make a consistent product? So, so the time, so there's there's alignment issues between mm -hmm. the top of the bottle and the nozzle. Mm -hmm. and then there's timing issues where they're releasing the powder before the nozzle and the the brim have met. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just an absolute shit show. I mean, don't do drugs. Drugs are bad. But like, if you're going, make to. a good factory. Make a good factory. Make a deliver a high quality product. And this stuff. Oh, and then here. Look at this, look at this system for boxing it up. It's just stuff strewn all over the table, stoppers all over the table, stuff's gonna get dropped. This isn't even a proper table this guy is using. These, this is like a folding car, this is like a poker table. These bottles are gonna, these bottles are gonna roll off. You're gonna get glass, glass and drugs all over the ground. People are gonna step in it, that's not good. Plus if you wanna do inventory, so people, you can tell if people aren't stealing or not. This is just rife for stealing because you could slip one out of your pocket, no problem. Right. Because nobody's keeping track. Pocket. Yep. 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 And if, and this yeah, if one of the... is potent, I imagine this drug's yeah. supposed to be potent. Yeah. Is this like a three month supply? Like <laughs> you're handing out three months supply to people? Like give them out little tiny little baggies. What are we doing? Yeah, I guess we don't know what drug this is, but that looks like a lot. It looks like a lot, I guess. I mean, yeah. I... Maybe this is one dose. Like, that's crazy. I don't know. Oh like, <laughs> it's like Metamucil. You like stir it into you your stir. drink. <laughs> it helps you with regularity and gets you high. <laughs> and what is this? What is this PPE consistency? This guy no gloves. This guy no gloves. This guy gloves. Is is this stuff dangerous to your hands or not? Right. Or is your hands going to contaminate this the stuff? In which Are we case, worried about lose... fingerprints? These guys aren't worried about fingerprints. That's good fingerprints. There's all kinds of reasons to wear gloves. Why are they wearing gloves? And it's a I disaster. think okay. So so I've not I've never been to a cocaine processing factory, but I've seen them on TV. Okay. <laughs> I think these people are all supposed to be naked. We're all supposed to be really? naked because then because then yeah because then you can't steal stuff. You can't put stuff in your pockets, and then also okay. you don't get this like this dust 
that's in the air that settles on your clothing. And there's clearly dust. We see from the mm -hmm. scoop, like look here, all this fuzzy mm -hmm. gray versus the dark gray of the, of the stairway. Like there's, there's this powdery stuff. And you don't want that landing on your clothing because if you're going around you know, out on the street in your clothing, you got drugs in your clothing, the cops are like, hey, why do you have drugs in your clothing? All right, I'm gonna follow you to your work. Like, That's you don't right. want cops following you into your workplace. So it, it shouldn't be, it's not like, like a clean room, but like an isolated room mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where you shower and reclothe going in and out, is what you're what saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or, or are given what are they called? The suits you bunny put on? suits, bunny suits, bunny suits. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. you, it's like this coverall, environmental hazmat typey thing that with your white cover up. Yeah. And so, and then that way, the people's skin remains clean, their clothing remains clean, and so that way you like cover up your job, your drug operation, so you don't get caught. So they got problems all over the place. They got waste. They don't have an engineer on the case. They got inventory problems. They got PPE problems. And plus, they're going to get caught because they're going to have cocaine all over their clothes when they go outside or whatever this is. Whatever this is. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. I do like these boxes, though. So these boxes, there's clearly already mm -hmm. packaging tape mm -hmm. and it's just been cut open. But I think these boxes are the boxes in which these bottles are shipped in. So huh. reuse, recycle. Pretty good. Yeah. So, okay, so they buy the flasks from a legitimate supplier, mm -hmm. Amazon Amazon's box, yep. Yep. and then they, they give them out to the, the street in the same flasks, and the cops are not tracking oh, shit. the orders. <laughs> yeah, right. like, There's a like, massive order for these flasks. The exactly. <laughs> Go into this work. <laughs> but Gosh. maybe it's coming from, I mean, maybe the flask orders are cleaned. Laundered through some company. Mm -hmm. How would you get around that? I guess you could have artisanal glass blowers in your place. <laughs> like each glass is <laughs> custom made, custom handmade, and unique. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a cool selling point, actually. Right? Oh yeah. I guess you could have you could have like a real company, like a front company that's actually delivering legitimate product in this, and mm -hmm. then ten percent of them go off into the drugs. But still, then the cops would be like, well. Who's a, who's a big user of these? I'll go check them out. These are so unique looking. That's right. You really want a, like a more standard bottle and a high volume bottle. Like when you go to like a Mexican restaurant, little, little glass bottles of Tabasco or like Tapatio. Mm -hmm. There it is. You use those. There it is. Because it's totally legit reason for why you'd have a bunch of Tapatio glass bottles. That's right. You order enormous amounts of hot sauce for some reason. Oh, I meant get the Tapatio people in involved in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you got. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you have an enormous amount of? Like, it's like a normal person. Like I just like hot sauce on everything and individual bottles. <laughs> and this is Dick again, Dick Jones covering his ass, looking out for himself and the corporation with Directive Four. Let's watch. You better take me in. I will. <laughs> So good. What's the matter, officer? It's a little insurance <laughs> policy called Directive 4. I mean, this is fantastic. Dick Jones has Robocop. It's kind of a loose end out there that he doesn't control the behavior of. Mm -hmm. So you put in this security measure. Does the security measure make sure that Robocop acts appropriately and with morals? Absolutely not. You make sure that it covers his ass and the company. I uh... I mean, that's good executive decision. It's 100% good. If you mm -hmm. are looking out for the shareholders, which is your fiduciary responsibility, you make sure that your products can't be used against you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And who's going to do more good? Robocop or OCP who can build newer, better Robocops? That's right. OCP. So you need to protect. Yeah, OCP. So every, it's a win, 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 win. And just everybody. strategic, super smart. Because when you're building a new robot, human type thing, eh, there's going to be some bugs. You don't know how it's going to behave correctly. So you should put some insurances. That's for right. example, uh, Director 4. Yeah, absolutely. Dick I mean, Jones clever. really, he knows how to play the game. The corporate game, make sure the shareholders and himself are looked after. Corporate game and the robotics game. 
Like he's also tech savvy. Well, that's right. He knew that was possible and got some engineer to do it. Right. You build a law enforcement RoboCop. You think it's just going to be a law enforcement RoboCop, but actually it might turn against you. And Dick mm -hmm. had the foresight to think about that. Mm -hmm. So Dick calls up ED-209 to come mess up RoboCop. And RoboCop messes him, messes ED-209 about. The weird thing here is that when ED-209 is hurt, does he experience pain? Good save, RoboCop. Good save, yeah. Makes him shoot his own arm. Yep. And he like twitches. He's like shuddering, shaking as if he's in pain. Does that does that mean they 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 created a robot and then came up with a way to give it pain so that it, it feels pain? Like why why would you do this? Well, isn't there a thing with people that they don't have like pain or fear response and they do like mm -hmm. really irresponsible slash bad behavior. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I heard about this. I was listening to a podcast about this woman who doesn't feel pain. And so she like she knows intellectually not to put her hand on the on a hot pan, but she doesn't she knows that because she like logically thinks about it. Not because she's like, ooh, ooh, hot, no, 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 no. Like like she has to actually think about it. Uh, what are you what so, are you saying? Yeah, so I'm saying that maybe they programmed him ED two oh nine with pain to be a good way to limit his behavior out on the street i see so so i was thinking that it's, it's super unethical to create a new being that doesn't experience pain and you're like here here's a here's a way for you to feel pain like i want you to experience agony but what mm -hmm. you're saying is it's actually a good mechanism to enforce not doing mm -hmm. painful things how, how to like protect your like, body like for in the future ed209 is going to know mm -hmm. like don't shove my gun in someone's face because they can, might shoot my other arm is that what you're saying yeah that's what I was saying. But you're saying it's immoral to create a being that feels pain? Yeah, because like here you can create this being that doesn't feel pain. And you're like, mm, I'm going to make you feel pain. Like, I don't have to give you. I can make you feel joy. Like, why, why am I making you feel pain? So every nut is a tragedy in waiting? You talking about acorns? You talking about walnut? What are you talking about? What? <laughs> no, creating a new because, human. Because you, you make pain. a tree and then tree can feel pain response? Is that... Oh, I was going way worse than that. Insemination. Because you're creating a being with pain. <laughs> I see what you're saying. The logic is tight. Yep. That's what I'm saying too now. Okay. Okay, but this isn't this okay, this is slightly different. This is slightly this is different slightly. because you're creating a new category of being. You're not like continuing biological stuff. You're, you're creating an electronic, purely electronic being. And you're like, hmm, I need to give it some type of self-deterring pain experience. I could just tell it like, hey, don't do that. But maybe maybe that's the thing, is the person who feels the, who does not feel pain, but intellectually knows it, mm -hmm. the behavior isn't modified correctly. You really have to give the, maybe you really have to give the robot actual pain and then uh, behavior is modified properly. Like okay, maybe I, there's I, no other way to do it. I see what you're saying, and I like it. I like it because you can program in all the things you shouldn't do. But ED-209 is a street bot. <laughs> it's going to be mm -hmm. out there patrolling, encountering new problems. Mm -hmm. And so then you need ED-209 to figure out what it should and shouldn't do on its own, uh, which means you give it a little bit of pain so that way it knows what it shouldn't do. Which means ED-209 is way more advanced than it was sold as. Yeah because it's, it actually can emotionally connect somewhat with the people it's enforcing. Mm -hmm. So Dick Jones's product, goddamn. It's actually deeply far reaching, very thoughtful. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but, but it does have problems. And really the yeah. question is, are bipedal robots viable? And it encounters this problem. Let's watch it have this problem. <laughs> Roar. Okay, yeah. so it's like, how does it navigate this? And like, it clearly wants to hunt. Oh. They can't. And it like screams. It like screams as it's as it's on the ground, and Robocop's like, this is my opportunity to just walk away. Like, I this is like not my problem. Like, whatever. Okay, but so so are these bipedal robots viable? Because you have fall hazards. Like, how's it gonna? I was going to handle this. 
Well, is it is its feet just they're just too big for human stairs? That's true. Maybe it needs <gasps> I see. to be people sized in some way. So you're saying the reason it fell is not really about the bipedalness because I was imagining if it had a third leg or fourth leg, it could use those other legs for stability. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is really is an issue of this foot's just too big, too big. So, so yeah. Okay. So, okay. 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 An elephant has four legs. An elephant would yeah. not be able to negotiate a staircase like this. It's just too big. Mm -hmm. So, so, so really this robot just needs to be human sized. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It just needs to be human shaped, human sized, human shaped. And in fact, Robocop is, and yeah. he walks down the stairs. Yeah, see you. Yeah. A bit a little goofy, but that's all right. So, I mean, even just making the legs more human sized or pointy would be, would be a good start. I guess, I guess these legs would be okay if the stairs were bigger. But, but 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 it's it's trying to go through places that are designed for humans. So yeah, designed for humans. So unless it's encountering like I don't know cargo loading stairs, I don't even think that's a real thing. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you, you, <laughs> I don't know. yeah, you would have a ramp. <laughs> You'd have a ramp, yeah. So also, it acts like an animal. It has been it's been programmed with pain, and it looks like fear and frustration. Mm -hmm. This is really okay, advanced. Okay. okay, this is loud. Let's watch it again when it hits the bottom. It's like flailing and screaming, mm -hmm. squealing. Like it's like I think that's an actual just pig sound. And so it's like frustrating and helpless. And you see, it's not just like hits the ground and like whatever. Yeah. Uh, what should I do? Okay, recalculating. It's yeah. like it's freaking out. It's freaking out. So ED two hundred nine was programmed or whatever created with lots of animal like things. This is an advanced robot. Okay. I have a new head cannon. Okay. And there's a child's brain in here. <sighs> Cause there's, so you don't see inside. It's just, mm -hmm. you mean, but, but it, it's learning and adaptive and like response to, to pain and which, which kids do like, right. Like you, like I jumped off a trampoline mm -hmm. as a kid and got injured. Like I was very tentative to getting back on trampolines after that. Um, and then it's here, like pinned down on his back and it's like screaming frustration. Whereas like an adult, you're like, uh, just reassess the situation mm -hmm. and roll over, get yourself back up. But like a kid, like screaming, screaming and like, help me pain. My arm's mm -hmm. missing. Right. So Dick Jones does imply that it's computational, but we never actually are introduced to how ED-209 works. And based on what we're seeing, it could be a child's brain inside. And that could be an advantageous over Robocop, which uses an adult brain mm -hmm. because a child's brain is more plastic, adaptable yeah. for learning new situations, which has the advantage of the learning, but the disadvantage of, well, this. Okay. This is more advanced than I thought. It's dark. It's so dark. But Let's I mean, start harvesting but, children. But Dick is good at business. He is good uh, at don't, business. Har don't harvest children. Make best friends. Yeah, so Bodiger and Dick Jones, they become best friends because they want to make money. They're sort of two sides of the same coin. One is crime, one is corporate. I don't have time for this bullshit. Self Clarence, Delta City begins construction in two months. That's two million workers living in trailers. That means drugs, gambling, prostitution, virgin territory for the man who knows how to open up new markets. Well, I guess we're going to be friends after all. Okay, first off, look at how well Bodiger navigates corporate spaces. You know, the fashion, the talk, the mannerisms, just everything. He just does it well. This feels okay. Like head honchos at corporations are criminal-ish in, in uh, Robocop. I see what you're saying. And then criminals are also, you know, the same sort of person who like nice so, things. So you're saying Dick Jones is businessman, a little bit of crime. Boddicker is criminal, a little bit of business. A little bit of business. And so they're actually kind of the same person, but from mm -hmm. different origins. Origins, yeah. And just the fact that Dick Jones has no problem collaborating with organized crime. In fact, he's going to set up the 
the construction of Delta City underpay the workers and in trailers and make sure that it, that depravity in the area is is uh well supplied through Bodiger. This is amazing. He's setting up the alley oop. That's right. So Dick Jones understands Bodiger's business so well that he can set it up for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this Tossing never happens in the real world, right? I Corporations know. follow the law and criminals like the cartels are completely separate and they never talk ever. And that's why the cartels have been completely shut down. Gosh, yeah. I mean, okay. Dick Jones could have, okay. Dick Jones, he listed, he just listed housing how did he trailer he said trailers trailers and then he said prostitution yeah gambling was there a fourth yeah. one let's just get it real quick yeah drugs. gambling prostitution virgin territory drugs prostitution gambling and trailers mm -hmm. but but if dick jones was clean if he's on the level he would have said apartments and drugs i guess that's like bars Bars, right? People bars, yeah. go get inebriated, social, fun, right? Mm -hmm. And then prostitution, mm, that could be <laughs> massages, I guess, and dating places instead of prostitution. Yeah. And then the last one was gambling, but you could have like a sports arena so that people, way people are entertained. Mm -hmm. And so he could be clean, but instead he understands like the seedy nature, underground bag room stuff mm -hmm. that Boddicker likes. And so Dick Jones, yeah, it really is the same side of the, or same side? It's it's not even same. It's not even opposite sides of the coin. Same coin. It's like it's like one side of the coin and like the rim of the coin. <laughs> like they're really adjacent, yeah. right? And so when when Dick Jones is talking to Bodiger, he says gambling, prostitution, and drugs. But if Dick Jones was selling this to another corporation or somebody in corporate culture, he would use different words, but it would be the exact same thing. That's right. So we code switch. That's right. That's depending word. on who he's talking to, even though it's the same thing. Huh. But I mean, I guess that's, that's also a statement that Dick Jones is a very good businessman. Like, he's he a understands. Very good businessman. He understands the needs of people. He understands the needs of the corporation in order for this advancement of mm -hmm. whatever project they're working on. And he's like looking down the road, seeing things and mm -hmm. planning it out. He's also he's also protecting the corporation because he's telling Bodiger the opportunities, but he's not signing contracts or putting name on paper or anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just, he knows Bodiger will be set up to do those things, right. but the corporate corporation will be, there'll be a clean, corporation clean, clean. division. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's Jones. clever. That's super clever. Okay. So RoboCop, he takes off his mask after he's attacked by OCP. And this is this is the highest sci-fi point in the entire movie. He he has a crisis of who am I, what am I, and he's neither man nor machine. And he's something in the middle, and we they, it's actually addressed. Oh, screwed up. You may not yeah. like what you're going to see. He's got the drill. He's got a feeling for what Lewis is going to may not like it. It's going to be unnerving. He he knows it's weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He sees himself. He's like, that's the Murphy's face. It's really good to see you again, Murphy. She called him Murphy. Mm -hmm. Murphy had a wife and son. What happened to them? But he does not refer to himself as Murphy. Like, he, right. like she, she sees his face. She's like, you're Murphy. But he's like, what is Murphy's family like? Like he's he he does not see himself as Murphy something else and i i think that makes sense because he is no longer murphy he's robocop but there's like residual memories that he feels but doesn't have ownership over right gosh what does it mean to have ownership of a the memory way. then if you have an ownership of memory that's your experiences that's what you did in your life that's who you are and what you've done but here he is living in a robot body with a mix of the husk of a former sentient being. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but how does the consciousness of RoboCop now know not to take over the memories of Murphy? There's, there's a distance there. Yeah. Weird. It's like, yeah. 
He's he's neither his own robot nor Murphy. It's he's 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 the deep philosophical questions of what am I? What 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 am I? I'm a being made out of the dead corpse of some other being. Like what is? Yeah, and he he's in crisis. A little bit more. Mm -hmm. Let's. Hey. Where did they go? She thought you were dead. She started over again. I can feel them. But I can't remember them. Leave me alone. He doesn't want her help, even though she comes to comfort him. Well, I mean, she comes to comfort him with like a physical human touch, but it's just mm -hmm. beyond metal. Right. So he's like, just leave me alone. Just, I'm some type of human, not human machine, not either. And I, and I feel these things, but I really shouldn't be. I wasn't supposed to. Yeah. Heavy, Gosh. like heavy sci-fi. Yeah. From Robocop. We don't, we, don't have an, we don't have answers to this. Like what is consciousness? What is the self? Mm -hmm. What is what is a being? What is intelligence? Like we don't have any of these answers today. And does Robocop, Robocop have a soul? Kind of. I don't, I don't even know Maybe. what a soul is. Does he have sentience? I think so. He's navigating kind the world of. pretty well. Yeah. But um, but partially because he has sentience from a former or something else, right? Like. I mean, Gosh, it, I mean, it's it's it, it's he's a being made out of the carcass of another being. Yeah, like, what is that? Like, I mean, imagine that you have makes... a dog that was made out of a sheep. And you're like, here, dog, and the sheep's like, bad or wolf. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, despite our like emotional revulsion to the whole thing, it is as far as nature's concerned, it's just another being, right? That's true. Just because it feels bad to us and grotesque or weird. Is that a valid thing? Okay, it, it feels weird and grotesque in this scene. Mm -hmm. But as soon as he puts his helmet on, I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's just Robocop. Whatever. Yeah, because that, that doesn't, when we see his eyes and his face fully, we humanize him and now we don't like it. It's like Uncanny Valley something. Okay, okay, okay. But, okay, so let's make it not human. So you have a dog, golden retriever, you, you raised him for, for 12 years and then your dog dies and you carve out its body, put in some metal and program a new dog's personality, but it's not quite right. Like you, like you like throw fetch for 12 years and then you're like, Hey dog. And then you throw the ball and the dog's like, what? Like I have a memory of that's a ball, but what, what do I do with this? So that's not, that's not my dog. It's probably not your dog, but it is an entity of some kind with some kind of sense of some self and consciousness or something, mm -hmm. but it's not your dog. It's different. Right. And so I imagine from that dog's, from that sentient robot dog, he's like, why did you build me inside the body of something else? Yeah. Oh. This is such a this is so heavy. Yeah, I was not expecting that from just Robocop. Mm -hmm. Thought I was just gonna be fun shooting. Mm. Instead, we get slums. What is, what is this? Yeah, this is the slums of Detroit. In I don't don't actually know when Robocop takes place, but I'm seeing like older buildings that were probably businesses a long time ago, but now it's kind of devolved into squalor. I mean, yeah, there's businesses kind of. that are getting destroyed here by these hooligans um are you saying squalor because of trash because because this amount of trash you could go mm -hmm. to the big u.s cities like new york or san francisco um big yeah. big metropolitan cities and i think you can encounter a trash like this maybe even more like this is i mean not everywhere but in the bad parts sure yeah that's true and i guess do you, okay looking at this picture would you want to be doing a nighttime stroll on this sidewalk right here i would not I would not want to. I would feel yeah. like I was in danger. Yep. So I'm going to call that squalor. I'm not sure. Okay, if I take the hooligans away, they're doing violence in this immediate time. 
Okay. I still wouldn't feel comfortable. It's something about there's nudes, girls, mm -hmm. there's abandoned buildings, it's trash. It's all of it, all of it yeah. in combination makes it feel. I see what you're saying. It has a weird, it has a uncomfortable vibe to it. Mm -hmm. A little, a little bit of check my shoulder type place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it is functioning. I see power. That's right. Uh, there are businesses. I mean, okay. It's true. Yeah, nude, right. nude, so nude if, is a business. If a, <laughs> if a place, if a place, if a locality, if like a city is really falling apart, these are boarded up and empty. Yeah. So the fact that these are operating means that there's a community nearby that is servicing them, the stores, or maybe the stores are servicing them. Yeah. Uh, but somehow they're customers, and this place is the place is doing okay. It's it's functioning, probably maybe not well, but. Mm -hmm. If it was completely non-functional, like you said, it would be abandoned. Yep. So, and there's also, if we go to the next picture, I think it is, okay, here's more. This is after they fired their guns. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to be a fire department. Like I didn't. Or maybe they just hadn't responded quickly enough. Responded enough. That's possible. But they do have water pressure. That's true. Yep. So it's not like the city if, shut off water to this part of, of the city. Right. And if it was really abandoned and non-functioning, they would shut off. Yeah, shut it up. Water pressure. There's no reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, there's no reason to maintain the pump pressures if there's no one in the city. That's right. Also, the street, real that's great condition. Right, not a single pothole. Wait, this is Detroit. This is, has winter, summer cycles. No mm -hmm. potholes. Oh yeah, the the. So I learned this when I moved to a place that freezes during winter. So the mm -hmm. the winter is really bad for the asphalt because water gets mm -hmm. in there and then freezes and then it expands just like an ice cube and that just that just mm -hmm. tears up tears up the asphalt. Yeah. Plus they got books here. Books. People reading. People reading. That's good. That's good for the mine. Mm -hmm. There's also, I think the next picture is, yeah, there's a hierarchy. So these hooligans are messing up a store. They're causing chaos. But this guy is Bodiger's guy. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with him. So there is some sort uh, of functioning hierarchy where they can mess up stuff, hooligans. That's right. But you don't mess with Bodiger's guy. You, everyone so, knows that. These hooligans, they could be messing with him, taking his vehicle, and just just messing with him for fun. But there's like a respect. There's like a, mm -hmm. a social system. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and then they're messing up the store. To me, this looks like a functioning store. Yep. Right. And yep. there's glass, and they're going to throw this newspaper dispenser through the glass. Hmm. Which, it's functioning, which means, why would the hooligans be throwing stuff through the glass and then why wouldn't the glass just be boarded up if this happens unfrequently that's right so, right so we're, we're happy we happen to be watching a crime on the day that it happened but if mm -hmm. this happened a day before two weeks ago like this this window would be boarded up and if that happened enough times the owners would be like you know what we're not even we're not even going to do business here like we're out we're checked out right yeah so and the at least fact that they're not if, checked out means that this community is doing doing okay doing okay and so why are the hooligans throwing something through the window? Maybe they didn't pay their protection money to Bodiger. Uh, so you're saying the store did not pay its protection money. And so these guys are the, the ruffians that are going to intimidate the store owner by doing a little bit yeah. of damage. Yeah. Pay your money. Pay your taxes. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, okay. Your protection yeah. taxes. Yep. yep. <laughs> and then you won't get your store effed up. Yeah. So it's chaos. It's slummy, it's squallery, but there is a functioning society there. I mean, it's slummy and squal squalorly in in relation to what we want from American standards. But certainly other places in the world, this, this is fantastic, right? Yeah. I mean, the power's on. These light bulbs are all plugged in. One, one's kind of weird, but they're all one's there. Weird. Gosh, okay. even at work, I have flickering lights. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not bad. Not bad. Plus employment opportunities. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so Bodder and his Bodinger and his gang get these large weapons that have explosive rounds and they go find Robocop at the abandoned factory. What are these tactics? Three man formation. Three man for formation with a mm -hmm. ice cream truck. Yeah, ice cream truck. Just 
turn and blast. Looking for me. <laughs> what is Robocop doing? Why did Robocop so, announce himself? <laughs> like just just start shooting. He's trash for talking. Me. Yeah, that's trash talking, yeah. So I mean I'm no tactician, I don't know tactics, but walking out in the open in like a low lying area. To me, that seems like the worst of everything. Like people can yep. be high and see you. You're funneled, so you can only go two directions. Yep, no escape. Uh, you're out in the open. No cover. And you have these weapons that are like hard to Right, it's maneuver. not small and maneuverable. It's not a submachine gun. It's a long pointy. Yeah. Gosh, and they're so trigger happy. Like they hear a noise and they blast. Why do they have these <laughs> long range rifles and not a single person aims? I mean, gang culture, you know, this is hip fire. gang culture. You just hip fire. Yeah, Plus they have, ex they have explosive rounds. It'll take care of it. That's right. Just get in near. Mm. Pop everything. I, I mean, they look like they're, I don't, I don't know weapons, but it looks like an anti-armored vehicle, anti-tank sort of rifle. Mm -hmm. Anti-material, yeah. With explosive rounds. So you just sort of aim it where you want it to hit and it'll take care of business. <laughs> Robocop cop up here. Messing yeah, with what's them. What's he doing? These tactics no are wild. No helmet. What are you doing? No helmet. Put your helmet on. Mm -hmm. And no one's watching behind them. <laughs> Everyone's looking forward. That's right. And all three swing to the distraction. Mm -hmm. It's like a video game where you know where you throw the distraction and everyone's like, oh, all the batteries like, ding. And, <laughs> yeah. and then you sneak by or you take them out stealth or you just blow them all away. Mm. <laughs> this would actually be a really fun video game level. Like it would be. going through this abandoned place, taking on the henchmen. That'd be cool. I've been in places, I mean, kind of like this, but not, I mean, not decrepit, mm -hmm. but laser tag or paintball. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. It would be so oh, much fun. So much fun. Except for this stuff. Yeah. Well, okay. So this is toxic waste and well, let's watch how toxic this toxic waste is. Oh. Crunch. Ah, oh, it's so toxic. It's so toxic. It's not like toxic, like in 40 years, you're going to get cancer. It's rapid. We're, we're talking about like five, 10 seconds. <laughs> Seriously. Ah. Not Ugh. appropriate for children. So, so that means the corporation that abandoned this factory, they put mm -hmm. this like hyper toxic stuff in this rusting container without secondary containment on the ground, just chilling for pretty much for the rest of time until something happens to it. I mean, gosh, I, I, I'm imagining that's a chain link fence out, out front and it's locked. So mm -hmm. nobody should be in there. And this I mean, it's labeled, labeled toxic waste danger. I did. Hey, like, right. We did. If you are the corporation, you know, you did your part. Yeah. You put danger and you put toxic waste. And if there's seepage, the local community and any community downstream should come in here and take care of it. So it's not my responsibility. I mean, okay. 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 So you put a chain link fence around the facility and nobody mm -hmm. should be going inside. I mean, what, what, what do you want me to me, the corporation? What do you want me to do like evacuate like like the cities too like like people got to live where they live yep. and then i label this thing toxic waste and danger mm -hmm. like hey this thing is dangerous because there's toxic waste inside i'm not i'm not planning for like there might be criminal activity and like this like drive this ice cream truck mm -hmm. into it like what do, you, what do you want me to do put this in a bunker like you know and it's gonna if i was the corporation it's gonna cost me money to True. just properly dispose of these materials um, and I'm out of here. So it's really Sorry. not my problem anymore. I'm looking out for the shareholders. The shareholders are telling me, you know, if the if the community nearby is going to feel the pain from the toxic waste because it might seep into the ground or the, the, the container breaks and it also mm -hmm. seeps into the ground. I mean, that's their responsibility to take care of. As a, as that, a representative of the shareholder, I'm not going to do that. That's right. Easy.
Right. I mean, I, I take care of my business. They take care of their business. Yeah. Is, is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing here. Like we, we, we dispose of these toxic, I don't know, chemicals and equipment and just throw it into, you know, this rainwater accumulator. So, that it, I mean, I just don't, you know, I'm looking out for my shareholders. Okay. I, I like what you're saying. We're doing a goof, but this bothers me. <laughs> this bothers me a lot. Okay. Cause if there's toxic, if there is toxicity in there, mm -hmm. this is standing water. This mm -hmm. is, this is where mosquitoes are born. And you, mm -hmm. I mean, what type of mutant weird mosquitoes might come out of this? And then they're flying in the air, buzzing around, not, not good. Mm -hmm. And this really needs to have good drainage because this water could, could affect this tank and like rust it out yep. from the bottom. If you rust it out from the bottom, now the water is going to like leak yep. or whatever talks about yep. going to leak into the ground, into like the water table, maybe hit on aquifer. So you get this like mm -hmm. running water underground. Mm -hmm. And then this toxic waste could be pulled to other communities that are far away. So, so I think as me, as a shareholder representative, okay. I need to get a couple of geologists on it and make sure they map out the entire aquifer. Okay. And so when this toxic water seeps down into the aquifer, we need to make sure that our neighborhoods are far away from the seepage so that other communities will feel the pain of the toxins. Like, so I get, okay, 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 let's do it. seriously. I get, okay. I don't get poisoned and my True. shareholders maximize profits because we don't have to pay for the cleanup. Like, how's this not a win-win? Yep. And, and I guess it also makes sense from the employee perspective, like the executive perspective, you, you actually pay a lot of money to the geological for the geological surveys, such that yeah. any toxicity, any bad stuff happens mm -hmm. far away from your employees. Cause if employees are getting sick, they're yeah. not going to want to work for you. But if right. someone's getting sick, I don't know, 200 miles away, like who's going to even connect the dots. Who's going to connect dots? I just make sure my guys are not over there in that town. And if I, if I notify the town that there could be a problem, I, I may expose myself to potential problems. They're, they're so, going to be on to me. So I'm not going to notify them, but they should be smart enough. They're sophisticated members of society. They should know. They should do their own test. That this is a, they should do their own tests. Like they right. should pay and, for it. Right. I'm looking out for me. Sure. Why are they, they trusting me? They should independently get their own answer and then see if it agrees. Yeah. I'm under no obligation to inform people of the repercussions of my money saving operation. There's only one obligation, which is to do the shareholders. Sure. Yeah. Make I don't want to get poisoned. So I get, make sure to hire the geologists to make sure it won't come into my neighborhood and everything's golden. I mean, it's an externality. It's on the outside. Yeah. Other people pay for it. I don't need to pay for it. Yeah. Like this thing. Oh, I don't need to pay for on decommissioning. Society. Absolutely not. I mean, if whatever company was here, they got bankrupt, they bounced. In fact, I even took a tax credit out because this was donated to the homeless. That's right. This could be, there could be lots of homeless people living in here. <laughs> but it's a charity write-off. They also choose not to because this place is scary. I mean, hey, they're on drugs, not my problem. Toxic. So toxic. Look at the stride, though. Real nice stride, yeah. Good running out of there. And uh, okay, so this henchman of Boddicker operates this uh, crane. It still works. Why is it powered? What's going on? Quick thinking. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, very nice. No hesitation at the controls. Only one lever. <laughs> why is it still powered what is going on does this guy know how to use it okay so so he, yeah he clearly knows how to use it he used yeah. it like he wasn't like fussing around trying to feel mm -hmm. he like knew the lever in it so my i thought i saw this too and i thought maybe this was his old job right right mm. company shuts down guy turns the crowd yeah. that makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. he doesn't hesitate to controls if this is his old job he just wrote right into autopilot mode and the situational awareness, like what I have thought to be like, what's in the crane? Is there crane? Is there is there already metal in the crane that I can drop on Robocop? Like, I don't even think about that. But this guy was like on, on, on the spot, on the dime. Like, you know, he looked right away. He's like, oh, there's stuff in there I can drop on Robocop. Then he navigates it right on top yeah. of him. 
And so he can navigate it, and he can also make the assessment that it's operational. So he's like, mm -hmm. oh, look at the engine, look mm -hmm. at this thing, look at the, oh, this okay, it's operational, I should go up there. Mm -hmm. I think this might be his former job, I like that. His former job, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, why the it, question is, why is it powered? I thought this place shut I down. Mean, uh, maybe the corporation just says, I'm out of here. And then they abandon the place. And do they even turn right. off the power? Oh, gosh. Maybe it's the city's job to come out here and turn off the power. Oh, yeah. It might be. In which case, if they haven't done it, like, get me an Xbox, get me an air conditioner. Like, I'm setting up, <laughs> I'm setting up camp. Right? <laughs> setting up camp in the, yeah, the abandoned factory. That's abandoned. Who's going to check? Yeah. For, I mean, free housing, right? Yeah. Cancer's just 30 don't, years away. Just don't talk. Oh, okay, yeah. That's good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if things are labeled don't touch, toxic, then just don't touch it. Yeah. It's toxic. There's there's no seepage or aerosolization or anything ever. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I trust and the corporations. You should, because they give thumbs up. Yes, yeah, so this is the, uh, well, let's watch this. This is the happy ending. Dick's fired. Thank you. That's right. Hell yeah. Gosh, Dick sucked. Yeah. What? Yeah, he, he was just a terrible person. Like, he didn't know how to look out for the shareholders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He Ultimately, did, he did a bad job. He did a bad job. He, he didn't know how to maneuver with the boss. The boss uh, ultimately did not like him. And fired him. If he had fired been him. better at his job, he would have read the boss and maneuvered around him. Instead, yeah. he tried to be he tried to be the CEO underneath mm -hmm. the CEO. He tried he reached he reached mm -hmm. too high. And then he and he made decisions that actually were not that good. Yeah. And yeah, he paid the price. He paid the price. I mean, correctly paid the price. He's dumping money into ED209, some behemoth of a project. Way, mm -hmm. Well over ambitious. Mm -hmm. You know, he's killing employees. This guy, it's just, he's not able to maneuver the corporate game very well at all. And it right. showed at the end, trying to it pull a gun on his this, boss. This Directive 4 is his is his linchpin. It's the strategy yeah. that he needs to, you know, to keep Robocop in line. But he never thought that he could get fired. That's that's yeah. so that's so self confident. That's so self confident that he that he's going to be in the corporation forever. Yeah, it's so arrogant. Arrogant. It's, I don't like him. Cool ending. Guy with good. the thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Good job. Good job, Robocop. He's next up. This guy. Next guy to in line for CEO. Replace Bob Morton. Bob and Dick are gone. Cool. So that was it. Cool. That was it. So what happens to OCP now? Now that Dick Jones is gone, I guess it's just business as usual, right? Let's continue. Yeah. So Dick Jones is gone. The ED209 project's probably toast. But Robocop, big thumbs up. So Bob Morton's okay. gone. Probably probably this guy takes over the project. Yeah, probably this guy. Yeah. He's been angling the whole time. And so does and this then, DCP continue to use Robocop? So DCP, Detroit City Police? Mm -hmm. I think this is great. I mean, yeah. I don't think Robocop has done anything bad. Yeah, so I think they have to continue. And crime is down, I guess. So Yeah. There was that one time where they were hunting him, but that's because OCP. But now that OCP is on board with Robocop, then it should be okay. Yeah. Is there a weird is there a perverse incentive to harvest human police? Because in order to make Robocops, you need former police that were recently killed. Mm-hmm. So at first you'd think, okay, any police officer that's killed in the line of duty, use their body to create a new RoboCop. But if you don't have enough RoboCops, maybe this is creating an incentive for OCP to start killing cops right? and creating more RoboCops. Right. You put officers in positions where they're likely going to die, then you get, oh, a perfect opportunity oh. for a RoboCop. Yeah. And if RoboCop is good at stopping crime, does that justify harvesting people? So in a one-off, I'd say yes, because he was dead anyway. Okay, yeah, but, he was already dead. And they're like, okay, we can use this opportunity. But gosh, it creates a lot of incentives that are questionable. I mean, RoboCop was called to the criminal place by someone. Like, how do they get that tip? 
Was that OCP? Right. right. That could have been OCP because OCP is in bed with Bodiger. I don't know. Mm, yeah. There is a RoboCop cool. 2. Maybe we'll watch that at some point. Maybe. Yeah. See you next guys time. next time. See ya.